so today we are going to be making some gains. We're going to be talking about deloading. So what do you think you know about deloading? So when I talk about deloading, taking a break from lifting. So people think taking a break, they're just going to shrink in size, atrophy. They're going to lose all their progress in one or two weeks. So we're going to go through some literature. I'm going to give you my thoughts, my recommendations and the best approach to this without going back to like following following a phase and going back into a new phase fatigued and uh, still having some central nervous fatigue and like overuse syndromes throughout your joints and stuff like that. We can get right into it. Alright guys, it's about to uh, head into the gym. I'm just going to do a little bit of accessory work. So previously throughout the week I did, um, oh what did I do? Earlier today I did a bit of full body workout. I did heavy, heavy chin ups, I did uh, shoulder press, a little bit of bench press and uh, some rows and squats, just two sets each. So I'm currently on a deload week. I'm gonna currently go through the deload literature and then we're gonna talk about uh, my mythology of deloading. So right now, I'm just gonna go through um, some accessory work. So I'm gonna hit some uh, delts, hit some buys, hit some triceps. I might throw in some skull crushes and uh, tricep push downs and just a little bit, uh, just some abs. Down, it's true. Had some dreams and said some things to you If I said too much, I know you're mine to lose I had some dreams and said some things to you Guys, welcome to the deload workout. All right, if any of you guys have watched uh, Big Brandon Carter, Spring BBC, <laughs> it's definitely not how it goes, but um, Big Brandon Carter he always does that intro to the video, it's pretty funny. But um, that's completely irrelevant to what we're actually going in today. So, just trying to adjust the exposure, so the sun's going down. All right, so we're going to get into deloading. So, I hope you enjoyed that quick little workout edit. So, I hit my um, I was doing I done reverse flies, so I done lateral raises. So, I hit the uh, lateral uh, deltoid head. I um, done some bench press early today, and I done a set of face pulls. Yeah, I, f I fucked up the filming, so I was like way out of the camera. So, I didn't actually do it with the forward facing camera, I did the uh, back facing camera of my um, the phone. Anyway, but besides that, I'm going to get straight into this. All right, so why do we deload? Deloading our workouts, okay, so when we get right into programming, you have macro cycles, so like six to 12 week blocks, like you have your on season and your off season, so you need to go hard, you need to peak, and you need to have times where you rest. If you're not resting, then you're just going to overtrain, you're not going to get that uh, super compensation. So if you Google super compensation, we'll get right into the midst of like... um. Uh, how you recover fatigue and how your body adapts to a training stimulus, all that kind of good stuff. But deloading is a way of letting your body rest, but still getting in maintenance work. Okay, so say you're doing five by fives four times a week. Basically, a deloaded workout will be halving the intensity or halving the volume or halving the frequency. So basically, instead of doing five by fives, you do five by threes. So instead of doing five sets of squats for five reps, do um, three sets of squats for three three um three reps of squats. So basically you just halve what you're doing in your sessions and stay away from actual failure training. So you can still kind of go in and chase the pump, at, so to say, but it may seem like you're just going to the gym for the sake of it, but it's still better than having some time off or just not going for like a week or two. But don't get me wrong, you still need to have down periods like times where you actually don't go to the gym, where you just have like a week or two off. The whole point of this is to come in bigger and stronger, okay? so. DOMS, so delayed muscle soreness, delayed onset muscle soreness, basically lasts anywhere from 48 to 72 hours, so three days after you're working out, it can last for 
But when you're when you've done like ten weeks of strength training, so I just finished a full body a full body strength program for ten weeks. I still haven't done my one RM test, but to be honest, I am mentally and physically taxed. Like psychologically, I just I'm not enjoying my workouts. My knees are sore, my hips are sore, my lower back sore. It, it's just it's just a byproduct because I've at that point where I've peaked. So I've done a wave loading on my um, my workout. So I was doing a full body program, pretty much squat, deadlift, bench, and a couple other accessory bits to work on my deltoids, upper chest, and my front and rear. So pretty much I'm just trying to make my body a little bit wider by building up my shoulders and increasing my um, compound lifts. But besides that point, I'm gonna go from a full body program, I've just finished my full body, I'm gonna go back to uh, upper body, lower body split. So I'm gonna be training four days a week instead of three. So the thing is when you train three, your workouts are quite longer, a lot more taxing. You get a bigger pump, but I personally like to do a little bit less, train more like straight into like 45 minutes, smash, done. Do my, do my three main compound exercise lifts for my upper body, so I'll do a push, a pull and some accessory work. I'll do some um, some face pulls, some uh, deltoid raises, some bicep curls, tricep push downs, or skull crushes, whatever it may be. Um, that that's just that's just what I like. But you have to understand with um, periodization, like programming, you have to mix up. You have to mix up. Like so, you might do a bodybuilding kind of style so not you might do a strength so you want to have macro cycles or like six to six to twelve week blocks where you change the way you work out because your body's just going to adapt to that stimulus so if you're not changing your workouts then you're not going to make any new progress so full body is very effective but um i'm at that stage now i'm deloading i'll have me deload week um i probably should have done my um one rm or two rm um tests but to be honest, I've just been so mentally fatigued, like and physically fatigued, my joints and that kind of stuff that I'm just I'm gonna leave it for a week. My 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 strength gains aren't gonna disappear overnight. That's one thing you have to understand. So muscle atrophy, so to lose muscle takes um like more so about two to three weeks before you actually see a loss in um a loss in strength and hypertrophy given um, that your nutrition's on point. If your nutrition's not on point, you can lose muscle basically in a 48, 72 hour period. If you haven't eaten much and you've basically gone on a binge or, sorry not a binge, you've gone on like a bender or like a big weekend or something like that. You, you can expect a little bit of muscle loss, but mainly most of that's glycogen. But besides that point, so deloading is a way of actually um, having a rest but still going in the gym, getting a little bit of work done. So um, from the research that I've personally gone through, the best way I've found is to actually volume, so the sets times reps times weight, so that workload is what is directly related to CNS fatigue. So central nervous system fatigue is when you don't want to train and your joints and everything get really sore. So the best thing is to cut the volume in half, but still have the intensity. So as I said before, so if you're doing five by fives, so maybe do five by threes or do two by five, something like that. So, or just drop an exercise off. Just don't do as much work in the workout session or just drop an exercise off. So just go in there, do a little bit of work. It might seem a little bit mundane, like you're doing nothing, but um, you still, you're still stimulating your muscles, you're still getting a little bit of work done. You're having you're having a break, but you're still getting work in. That's what you need to break away from. So the idea is to have a break now and then come back stronger. That's the whole point of it. Um, there's a lot more science to it, but it gets way too in depth, periodization. Just understand there's a point to it. You need to have rest and you need to have peak. So you need to peak and you need to rest. So in order to grow muscle and strength and improve, you need to have dedicated breaks, especially after you finish like a very intense cycle where you have increased the intensity or increased your volume throughout your workouts. If you have any questions or anything related, comment down below. As always, make sure you subscribe and like the video. Um, if you have any like anything you want to know, just email me. Make sure you join the fitness group. So Google, sorry, Google. So go on a Facebook search, type in fitness circle, see a picture of me doing a one-arm handstand. Join the groups, a male-specific group only. Get on it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.